Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday worship. Let us open our time together in prayer. Lord God, you have the bread of life for the hungry and living water for the thirsty. We come hungry and thirsty for your word with a desire to know your will and to love with your unconditional love. Help us to be fed and to learn from you. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Jeff will now bring us the reading and then Janet Eastwood, who's becoming a familiar face to us, is going to be doing the talk. The reading today is from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 4 to 8. Elijah, the only prophet loyal to God, had challenged false prophets and won, but at great cost. He fled into the wilderness, lonely, fearful and exhausted. And this is where our reading begins. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. Elijah got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, I'm Janet and it's really good to be with you again. I thought this morning we think a little bit about Elijah. 
He was one of the most famous of the Old Testament prophets, and it was not an easy job. He lived in a hostile world where King Ahab and his queen Jezebel were corrupt to the core. They and most of their people, led by deceitful prophets, had turned their allegiance over to false gods, and the real God wanted this one incorrupt man to take them on. Now we might suspect sometimes that the world is against us, but Elijah knew that his world was totally against him. He escaped after confrontation with the priests of the false gods, their allegiance with, with Ahab, and against all the odds, Elijah won. Jezebel threatened to kill him, and already exhausted, the prophet fled for his life, eventually collapsing underneath a bush. Terrified and traumatised, the only thing Elijah wanted to do was to die. But there was an intervention. Twice somebody came to him with food and drink. The Bible calls this person an angel, but remember the word angel actually means a messenger of God. And so this could well have been a very human messenger. Rested and restored by food, but still angry, Elijah made his way to a cave on Mount Horeb and again, tired out, he called on the Lord he had served so diligently and suffered so much for in doing. And in his anger and sense of betrayal, he shouted out to God. He also shouted at God. And there have been throughout history times when people have suffered beyond imagination for their beliefs or their nationality and they thought they can't endure it. And some have shouted and some have wept and some have lost the will to live. And in countries across the continents, this continues to happen today. Closer to home in ordinary houses and homes, some next door to us maybe, because of illness, ill treatment or mental illness, people today cry out in anguish and despair. Sometimes those cries are loud and vocal and sometimes they're kept in here. Some demand to hear God to speak or act. Some ask if there is a God. Another so traumatised he's simply not on the radar. The God we sometimes cannot simply worship because we're too hurt or too angry still hears our words and our response. And he likewise responds to us. With Elijah, it was imperative that the prophet got as far away from Ahab and Jezebel as possible. And this had to be his priority for a while. But once, once he was safe in, once he was in a safe place, God spoke to him again. Elijah might have been skeptical, but in those quiet words, the Lord gave back to Elijah his future. In our time and at this moment, people might be persecuted, poorly, angry, or simply very, very lonely, trusting that God alone could walk with them. We Christians are blessed by the knowledge that Christ is with us always. Centuries after, Elijah lived, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In short, he promised he would meet their needs always, as indeed he will meet ours. So let us pray. 
God of wind and fire, stillness and storm, give us faith to seek you in times of trouble. Reach out your hand to us when we're struggling so that we might believe and trust in you and find hope for the future. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our friend and our redeemer. Amen. We sing our next hymn, Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name. Leslie will now bring us this week's intercessions. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those whose influence has led us to come to worship you. Remember family members, Sunday school teachers, church leaders, friends and colleagues who have encouraged us to follow in the Christian way. We give thanks for the fellowship which we find in this church which supports us as we seek to put our faith into practice in our daily lives. Keep before us the vision of church communities where people of different church backgrounds will work and worship together harmoniously and where those who seek to know more about the Christian faith will find a welcome. Give us a clear understanding of the work you have set before us and a fresh commitment to your service in the coming year. Give wisdom to our ministers and the leadership team, and may our witness in Bickerstaff and Orton continue to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the parishes of Bickerstaff and Orton, with all the facilities they offer. We thank you for the many people who buy their jobs or voluntary work, help to make them a good place to live. Help us to continue to st strive to build a better community where people feel safe and can enjoy the natural and built environment. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who struggle against injustice, for men and women who have to live in violent and oppressive societies, for those whom hunger is a daily reality, and for those who feel powerless to change the ways of nature or the ways of nations. Teach us to be ever mindful of their relentless struggle to survive. We pray for peace in so many parts of our troubled world. We pray for the victims of the recent terrorist attacks, those who are injured, and those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray that those with influence and an authority will heed and promote the calls for tolerance, peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick, especially those whose illness is long-term and demands much patience to bear. We remember for you those who are lonely and depressed and pray that we may be good listeners when friends and neighbours need us. Give us the right words and help us to know what simple acts of kindness may help them. Comfort with your presence those who suffer in body, mind or spirit and give them courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who have died. Give strength to those who are left to grieve and help us to share in each other's sorrow. You turn our darkness into light. In your light shall we see light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us now sit back and relax and enjoy this week's gallery. sing our final hymn, In Christ Alone.
Let us end our time together in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for believing in us, for seeing beyond our outside and knowing who we really are inside. Thank you for giving us all we need to do your work, even when others may tell us we are only. Thank you, Lord, for calling us to be adverts for you, so that others can see that you also believe in them. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.